Hello everyone. Today, my friend Nurul Fatina Jiha and me, myself, Nur Iza, will explain about Al Ghazali's theory of ethics and its principles. Okay, first, uh, I will start with the biography of Al Ghazali. Um, the original name of Al Ghazali is Abu Hamim ibn Muhammad Al Ghazali. He was born in 450 in or between March 1058 to February 1059 CE. And he was born in the town of Tabaran in the district of Tus, which is now situated in modern day Iran. And Al Ghazali was a Muslim theologian, jurist, philosopher, and a mystic descending from the Persians. And he bestowed the titles of brilliance of the religion and eminence among the religious leaders. Al-Imam al-Ghazali also has been called as the proof of Islam, um, which is Hujjat al-Islam. Next, we will move to the contributions of al-Ghazali. In this slide, I will explain about some of al-Ghazali's work and also the main interest in the work of Al Ghazali, and okay, some of Al Ghazali's work that I list in the slide is Ihya Ulumuddin, which is the revival of religious sciences, Kimia Yisada, uh, the alchemy of happiness, Tuhafa Al Falasifa, the incoherence of philosophers, and the beginning of guidance and his autobiography, which is deliverance from error. And there are five main interests in Al Ghazali's work, which are first Sufism, second theology, third philosophy, fourth logic, and fifth Islamic jurisprudence. Um, next, we will move to the alchemy of happiness. So, what is alchemy of happiness? Alchemy of Happiness is a guide to transform the essence of man from his business to the purity of angelic state through increasing the knowledge of God. And there are four constituents of alchemy which are first, the knowledge of self, second, the knowledge of God, and third, the knowledge of this world as it really is, and fourth, the knowledge of the next world as it really is. Um, based on the alchemy of happiness, a person must find out the truth about themselves first, then get to know about God and will attain the happiness later. Next, um, the concept of end. And Al Ghazali stands in line with the scholars who evaluate ethical acts in terms of their final consequences or in another words, the eternal happiness in the hereafter. Um, this is because he believed that the true view of man is the otherworldly happiness which can be obtained if the necessary preparation for it be made in this life. And Al-Ghazali concerns two kinds of happiness which are happiness in, the, in this world and the happiness of the hereafter. For the happiness of this word pertains to three aspects uh, which are the soul, the body and the external virtues. So the external virtues relate to virtues such as wealth, status, friends, etc. And for him, uh, the external virtues such as wealth, status, and friends are meant to assist ultimately in the cultivation of the soul and not primarily to serve the needs of the body. Although we need it, uh, it cannot bring us happiness. It is only uh, a means by which we fulfill, we fulfill our duties to God. Ghazali's concept of end Ethical virtues and good characters are among the key constituents of human happiness. According, accordingly, Al-Ghazali's ethics, on the one hand, can be called the ethics for human soul, and on the other hand, the ethics of happiness, which aims at summum bonum, 
contrary to hedonistic ethics. Al-Ghazali surveys men's hedonistic outlook on the worldly gift, rejecting it by two reasons. Okay, first, worldly pleasures do not endure for long. Uh, or in other words, after the short lifespan of an in- individual, they will come to an end. And second, worldly pleasures are not pure or perfect, but mingle with different sorts of pain. Um, such such enjoyments therefore cannot be embraced as the aim of life. Next, I will proceed with self-knowledge. Um, knowledge of self is the key to the knowledge of God. Al-Ghazali stresses that a man who knows himself will know his God. Um, the knowledge of self that need to be possessed such as um, first to know what you are, and second, how you are created. Third, once you are forth for what you are here. Faith in what your happiness consists and you must do to secure it. Uh, and faith in what your misery consists and what you must do to avoid it. Um, the first step on knowing yourself is start with an understanding of the human beings two distinct components which are outward shape called the body and inward entity called as heart or, or soul. Al-Ghazali believed that by focusing on individuality, they will obtain a glimpse of the unending nature of that individuality. In the Quran, it is written, um, they will question concerning the spirit, say, the spirit comes by the command of my Lord. An exact philosophical knowledge of the spirit is not a necessary preliminary to walking in the path of religion, but comes rather as the result of self-discipline and perseverance in that path. As it is said in the Quran, those who strive in our way, verily we will guide them to the right path. Next, um, the self. According to Al-Ghazali, the concept of self is expressed by four terms in Arabic. First, heart which is called as second, soul which is root, and third, self which is nafs, and fourth, reason which is ark. And the soul in man understands the reality of things. Uh, Called, which is heart, is the spiritual entity which has been placed in human body for a transitory period. Um, reason or intellect, uh, which is known as akal, as the key instrument for true knowledge and wisdom so much, so that one can mistake him for a brute rationalist. In Kop, there are two things which are muharika and also mudrika. So muharika accelerates human organs and mudrika associated with five senses organs. Um, Heart does not belong to the visible world but to the invisible and has come into this world as a traveler visits a foreign country for the sake of merchandise and will presently return to its native land, according to Al-Ghazali. And there are two types of sense which are internal sense and also external sense. What is internal sense? Internal sense are common sense, imagination, reflection, recollection, and also memory. And for external sense, it occurs through specific organs in our body. There are two will in Akal, which are first human will that conditioned by intellect, and second animal will that conditioned by anger and appetite. Al-Ghazali argues that a human can either rise to the level of the angels with the help of knowledge or fall to the levels of animals by letting his anger and lust dominate him. For the next part, I will pass to my friend Nurul Fatih Najiha. Thank you Iza for the explanation. So next, I will continue to explain on our discussion about knowledge of God. What it means by the knowledge of God? It is where 
when the vision of God is rooted in the love of God and the love of God depends on one's knowledge of God. Meaning that man who knows his existence will know the existence of the Creator. From his own attributes, he knows the attributes of the Maker. From the control which he has over his own kingdom, he knows the control that God exercises over the world in order to arrive and understand the knowledge of God. There are two methods. The first one is difficult, more deep and profound. It is not adapted to ordinary intelligence. The second one is when a man looks at himself beginning at the time when he does not exist before, there was no trace or notion of his existence and contemplates his creation with attention. For example, in the construction of the tongue, salivating glands or any other creation. Al-Ghazali said that knowledge protects man from destruction and leads him to the ultimate end that is the nearness to God. Knowledge has two types, which is formal and existential. Formal knowledge is based on reasoning and education. Meanwhile, the existential knowledge has two types. The first one is phenomenal. Phenomenal which deals with material world. Spiritual which deals with spiritual realities. Ghazali further classifies spiritual knowledge into two as the first one, Ilmu al muamala which includes the science of conduct, the knowledge of human and worldly affairs, ibadat, adat, and the good and bad qualities of the soul. The second one is ilmu al-mukashafa, is intuitive knowledge, the knowledge of spiritual realities. It is the end and culmination of ilmu al-mu'amala. It is concerned with God, his attributes, purpose of creation, of earth and life hereafter. So for the next subtopic, we're going to discuss on Al-Ghazali and his refutation. Al-Ghazali attacked the philosophers on 20 particulars, which are 70, he said should be categorized as bid'ah, another three should be judged as kufur or unbelieving so we're going to discuss these three that being argued by al-ghazali okay so for the first one is eternity of the world according to ibn rushd god and world both are immortal and uncreated or al-kadim if the universe has the beginning then the universe becomes anew. There must be one who will create it and the one who creates the nature. It may be continue without end. It's more to a questioning on does this world have a beginning or not. So Al-Ghazali argued that because the world come with God's will, Irodat and he can create the world at any time he wants. According to Al Ghazali, the time and the world are created in the sense that they was God and the world was not, then the world was. So for the second argument is on the denial of God's knowledge of the particulars. In this um, it means that does God know about changing particulars or al juziyat al mutaghayyirah so Ibn Rushdi agreed with Aristotle opinions based on the following arguments 
the knowledge of God is consistent and does not change. Another one is God is the supreme and it is entirely impossible for God to know about particular things because he is the creator. So Al-Ghazali argued on this philosopher's view about God does not know about changing particulars because of God knows even very small thing. Nothing can be hidden from God's sight. God is almighty and all-knowing so that God knows entirely. God's knowledge is not dependent on time. The knowledge of God does not differ either previously, presently or in the future. Okay. For the last one is on the resurrection of the body, al ma'at al jismni. In this, the philosopher's view is the intellect. Akal is the tool of the philosopher for understanding this, the resurrection, where the reward and punishment are to be felt only by the soul or ruh, and not the body at all. The philosophers rejected the idea of the heaven and hell that was contradicted with the teaching of Islam. So Al-Ghazali criticized the philosophers' view because of their argument are only based on akal. Not everything in religious, according to Al-Ghazali, teachings can be perceived by man's intellect which is limited. Al-Ghazali also said that the intellect is the foundation on which the building of religion is constructed and it is impossible without foundation and foundation without building is without use. Thus, the relation between the two, Al-Assas wal Al-Bin, is so close that they cannot be separated. To reject the role of the intellect in religion is sign of ignorance. The separation between both is totally rejected in Islam. So, as the full conclusion, the knowledge of the soul should become the key to the knowledge of God. Second one is searching and knowing your own self which leads to the increasing the knowledge of God and it is one of the way to achieve the real happiness as a human being. The third one is the purification of heart leads man to his goal, the attainment of the ultimate end all of al-sa'adah, the pleasure and the vision of God. And the last one is, for a Muslim, the ultimate happiness is the happiness in the hereafter and when Allah grant us with the paradise. Thank you.